Good morning, children. Welcome to today's Sunday School. The title of today's lesson is Something That Will Last Forever. Can you say that after me? Something that will last forever. Did you say it? Great. Our Bible text for the lesson is from Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and John chapter 3 verse 3 to 7. Our memory verse for today, which I hope you've learnt throughout the week, is the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. I hope you followed along. Good job. I have a picture of something here. Can you see what this is? I'm sure you've seen many of these before. What is it? That's right. It's an egg. What do we use an egg for? Hmm. Do we use it to play football? No. Do we use it to maybe... Hmm. That's right. We use it to cook, to cook food, to eat with. That's what we use an egg for. And do we eat the outside part of this egg? No. We eat the inside of the egg. So you can have it boiled. How else can you have it? Tell me. Do you know other ways to eat an egg? That's right. I'm sure some of you said scrambled or fried. There's even poached. You can eat an egg many different types of ways, but you cannot eat the outside, only the inside. Do you know what that means? It's only really the inside that matters. And that is just like our lesson of today. The outside of our physical body is what everyone can see, but really what truly matters is on the inside. And what is on the inside? Our soul. Our souls are on the inside. Sometimes people buy something because of how lovely it looks on the outside. Or sometimes they see things and think, oh, that would be very nice. Maybe a present wrapped in a very big shiny box or maybe they see a nice looking house on the outside but you don't really know what's on the inside until you open it up or you go inside and what is on the inside is what really matters and what is on the inside of us is our soul and that's what we're studying in our lesson of today Now we're going to read our Bible text. So let's open to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and John chapter 3. We're going to only read verses 3 to 5. I hope you have your Bible. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And... Man became a living soul. John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In our Bible text, we could see that there was someone called Nicodemus. He was confused about what Jesus meant when he said that someone needed to be born again. Does it mean going back into your mother's tummy and being born? How your mum gave birth to you the first time? No, that's not what Jesus meant. What Jesus meant is that to be born again means being saved. It means having your soul ready for eternity. Having your soul in a clean and pure state 
that means that you can go to heaven. That's what it means to be born again. It means having a heart that loves to worship and love God. But at first, hearing it, Nicodemus didn't really understand. And I'm sure maybe many of you didn't understand. What does it mean to be born again? I hope that's helped you to understand it a bit better. When we are born again, our soul is ready to spend eternity in heaven, not in hell. Because if we're not saved, then the other place we can spend eternity is in hell. And Jesus will not be in hell. Jesus is in heaven, of course. And don't we want to see Jesus? I'm sure you do. So it's better to be saved so that our souls can be ready for eternity. And guess what, guys? We are special. Humans are special. Jesus made us different from every other thing in the whole wide world. Human beings are the only ones who have living souls. We are the only one that means who, when we die, will continue to live on in a different form, but we will still live on. Our soul is for eternity. And that's why the decisions we make now will help us to have a good eternity. If we decide now that we're not going to follow Jesus, then our eternity is in hell. God forbid. Rather, we want our eternity to be in heaven with Jesus. And so we have a chance whilst we are still alive to make that decision, to follow Jesus and to serve him with all of our heart and our soul, our strength and our mind. Let's give some other comparisons of things that do not have a soul. Can you think of any? I know of some. How about animals? Cats, dogs, lions, tigers, giraffes, elephants. They do not have souls and they won't live for eternity. Once they die, that's it. But when we die, we will still live on for eternity and our our soul will live on. What else can you think of? How about computers? phones or how about even buses and trains they don't have a living soul once they're broken or destroyed that's it that's the end of it it's gone forever you can never use that same computer again you can never use that same bus again they won't have the same functions and the same use that they may have had when they were in good condition that is just to show you that we are unique, we are one of a kind, and we should believe that God has made us very special. He gave us a living soul for a reason. The day he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, he became a living soul. And from then on, every single human being has also been given a living a living soul. So our physical bodies, once we die, They go to the ground. So you know people are buried, right? People get buried in the ground. And that means our bodies, naturally, they're made from the dust. So over time, the body will break down again and it will return to the dust. But those of us who are saved and who want to live forever with Jesus, our souls will live on for eternity. But those people who don't decide to follow Jesus will spend their eternity in a much more terrible place. And none of us want to be there. So we shouldn't even think about it. Let's make the right decision now to be saved and to have our souls ready for the coming of Jesus. So let's worship God and let's love God from our hearts. And that's just how our souls will be ready. When we sing songs of praise in church and at home and on the way to school, That is all coming from our soul. That is our soul worshipping God. And that helps us to love him even more. And when we do that, Jesus, he sees that we have chosen to live and reign with him forever. The little girl in our lesson of today, she was very happy because she realised that her soul being saved meant that she could live with Jesus forever. And that Jesus wanted her to be saved. 
we can be thankful and joyful just like the little girl in the lesson of today who was very grateful that she had a soul. We too should be just as joyful as she was because this is a great privilege which not every creature of God has. So there's a lot for us to think about with this lesson. Are we ready for eternity? Is our soul right with God? Do we want to spend eternity with Christ? Or do you want to spend it in a terrible place? Think very hard and long about this, children, because Jesus wants you to live with him forever. And that can only happen if your soul is ready for eternity. So our key statement for today is, I am special because God gave me a living soul. The lesson activity for ages two to five is thank you, Jesus. The activity for the age six to eight is titled in God's image. Next week's lesson is displayed here. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I trust God that you are doing fine and that you are very happy to be in Sunday school this morning. God bless you. Boys and girls, let us recite our memory verse together after the count of two. One, two. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. Boys and girls, look up, please, and look at this big and beautiful parcel I'm holding. This parcel with this seal is being addressed to a particular person, the owner of this book. And the instruction there is that it should be opened only by the owner of this parcel. That means that no other person is allowed to open it. And this brings us to the title of our lesson today, which states that worthy is the Lamb. In the course of our lesson, we are going to learn about a special book that God in heaven was holding in his hand and nobody in heaven or heaven that was able to open the book. But thank God for Jesus, our Savior, the Lamb. He was able to open the book. In the course of this lesson, we shall learn more the reason why Jesus is worthy to open the book. God bless you. Our Bible passage is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 1 to 14, and John, chapter 1, verse 29. But we are going to read some selected verses. Revelation 5, 1 to 5. 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof? 3. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. For, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Five, and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to lose the seven seas thereof. Let us stop there and listen to the lesson. 
Boys and girls, from the Bible passage we read, John the Beloved was shown the revelation of Jesus Christ, who was worthy to open the book that God was holding in heaven because Jesus Christ does not commit any sin, but he came to this life of sin. He humbled himself as a sacrificial lamb and he took away our sins. Boys and girls, let us answer some questions so that we can understand this lesson better. What was unusual about the book that God had in his right hand? Answer. It was a special book that no one on earth or in heaven was able to open. Who was worthy to open the book? Jesus Christ, our Savior, he was the only one that was worthy to open the book. In the previous lessons, we have learned that we all have the same opportunity to be ready for Christ's coming. Who made it possible? Definitely Jesus Christ made it possible. How was it accomplished? Jesus Christ came like a lonely lamb, like a baby. He came in the flesh, suffered, and surrendered his life for us on the cross of Calvary. So that you will not go to hell, I will not go to hell. He suffered for our sin. With his blood, he was able to take away our sin. He is worthy. Do we need to thank Jesus for this? Yes. Definitely. There are so many ways we can thank Jesus to appreciate him for this great love that he showed us that he surrendered himself for our sins. We can thank Jesus through singing. We can thank Jesus by playing our instruments. We can thank Jesus by giving our life to him. May God help us to be good boys and girls for him. We can appreciate, we can thank Jesus. When we surrender our life for him, we ask him to please come to our hearts. We pray and tell Jesus to save our souls and he will be so much happy with us that we appreciate what he did for us. This morning, my prayer is that God will interpret his word into our hearts. And we are going to pray and confess our sins to appreciate, to appreciate Jesus for his love so that all what he did for us will not be in vain. May God bless you. Amen. Explain why Jesus is often referred to as the Lamb of God. We can confirm this from our Bible. From the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. Let us read together. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the lamp of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. The key statement for our lesson is, Jesus Christ is the worthy lamb. 
Our next week lesson is lesson 117, titled The New Heaven and New Earth. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. God bless you all. Let us close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these lessons you have taught us. Thank you for primary part lesson. Thank you for answer class lesson. We are so grateful for the love you have for us, that you came to this life of sins to take away our sins so that we shall reign with you in heaven. Almighty God, this morning we want to pray. Those of us who are yet to be saved, Lord, please touch our hearts. Pray for us. Jesus, save our souls. Sanctify our souls. Baptize our souls, Lord. And those that are not aware, that are sick among us, Lord, please touch them and heal them. Jesus, please bless every one of us and write our names in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for your time, for coming to Sunday school. And I strongly believe that Jesus has blessed you. See you next week. Bye. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday school. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you. Bye.